All right, this lesson is going to be about <clears throat> how to uh, quantify interactive diagrams as well as uh, force diagrams. So to start off with, a little few pieces of information uh, that you need to know here. Uh, when we recorded the mass um, and force, we determined that um, the cocoon had a mass of 0.5 newtons. Okay, and so this is an example we've done uh, over in class before, but here we have a cocoon and we need to create an interactive diagram and from this one a force diagram. So first of all, we know that this cocoon is interacting with the earth and so there you have the gravitational pull. So there's gravity, uh, gravitational force involved. Um, just to use a different color perhaps, we also know that we have here a pulling force, uh, the cocoon is hanging down from the branch and because of that it is considered a tension force. And it shows we have no frictional force, there's nothing sliding up against each other and there's nothing pushing against each other. So we just have that pull um, from the cocoon to the branch as well as the pull of gravity. So now let's put some arrows down of uh, where that direction is. So clearly the gravity is pulling um, the cocoon down, but at the same time, this tension force is a pull up, right? The cocoon is being pulled up by the branch. So we have two opposing forces. Now I know that the force of gravity, we're gonna ha call this 0.5 Newtons. That is downward, so I place my circle here and draw my vector down, pointing down. This is my force of gravity and it has a force of 0 0.5 Newtons. Because this is a object that is not in motion, I know I need to create a balanced force diagram. So if there's no motion, we need to have them be balanced. And in that, for that reason, I need to be sure to draw a vector that points up that has the equal length to the vector pointing down and I would call that FT. It looks like an F, but my apologies, it should be a T. And this has to be equal to the force um, that is being pulled down, so it is exactly 0 0.5 Newtons. So that's just a simple explanation of how to quantify these amounts. So now let's assume we have a car. Um, the car is not moving, so we'll do a pen. So we have not moving, but I have an object sitting on the car. We're going to have car, the car be our point of reference, so let's see how that looks like. So I know the car is not moving. Um, it is interacting with the earth, so I do know I have a gravitational pull here. At the same time, I also know that there's an object pushing, there's uh, an object pushing down on the car, and that's this box. This box is pushing down that's going to be a normal force. And going back to the gravity, we know that's a pushing down force. Uh, at the same time, this floor over here is pushing the car up. And that is also a normal force. It is being pushed up, hence it's not falling to the core of the earth. And so for that reason, we have an arrow going up. Because it's not moving, we know there's no pushing force and there is no frictional force. In this case, we now have three force diagrams. So how do I draw that force diagram? I make a nice circle and I um, will tell you to quantify this, that this car will have uh, a force of, let's say, a thousand newtons, okay? So in that case, and this box has a force of 20 newtons. So this means we can now start adding some information. Well. The downward force of the car is our FG force from the gravity. I was just told that it was a thousand newtons. And you can always assume that this number that's given is going to be your FG force. In addition to that, I have a box also pushing down, so I have to make that a much smaller vector. It should be proportional, which it isn't, of 20 newtons. So two downward pushing forces. And now, lastly, I need to do a normal force that is equal 
to this entire vector. So this line has to equal that line. And I'll just do that. Um, and this is my Fn force. This has to add up to 1,000, my apologies, 1,020 newtons, okay? Because I have to have them be equal. All right, let's do one more. And this one here is going to be, uh, the reference point is our train. I'm doing the best I can with these drawings here, all right? Um, we have the earth. I'll tell you that the train has um, a newtonal force of 2,000 newtons, okay? Um, and we'll just sort of keep it as simple as that. I'll also tell you that the tension force is about 400 newtons. So these are numbers I'm going to always give you. All right, in this case, let's quickly do our interactive diagrams. We have the train and the earth interacting to each, with each other, that's gravity. I have the train's wheels with the railroad tracks. Those railroad tracks are pushing this train up. It is considered a normal force. I point the arrow upward for that one, just as a reference. Gravity, remember, is in this case always pointing down. Um, but I also have here a tensional force, okay? So the tension here, it is uh, being pulled apart. And for that reason, the tension is moving is between my train and wagon and this is a tensional tension force this is being pulled this way the frictional force remember this is again not moving i should mention the frictional force is going to be between the wheels and the railroad track so that's my frictional force and because it's not moving, it's going to have to be the opposite. So my frictional force is this way. All right. So how do I create a force diagram with this? So again, I'm going to put my reference point here. Um, I know that my gravity is pointing down. This gravity is my Fg force. Okay, Fg apparently is 2,000 newtons. That means I need to make sure that my normal force, which is that pushing up force, is also 2,000 newtons. All right, my tension force looks like it's moving this way, okay? So for that reason, tensional force, T, I was told was 400 newtons. So the frictional force, and you notice that I'm making vectors much smaller. These vectors are much smaller than those because I've got smaller numbers, and my frictional force is moving this way, okay? It also has to be 400. And that's more or less how you quantify it. Always make certain if it's not moving, your numbers have to be the same if they are opposite each other. 2,000, 2,000, 400, 400. They are the same number. Now what I'd like you to do is try answering the questions that you have been given for homework.